puta. <laughs> Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, the shit game plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So as for today's video, just put your seatbelt because we're going into a very long video because this is the How to Adrenaline 2022. Basically, I will show you and I will try to explain you the best way I can, what every setting in the AMD Radeon Adrenaline, not Radeon anymore, AMD Adrenaline Software Kit does, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. Now, this is the first menu you have where when you actually go into, you, into your AMD settings, um, and you have, for example, your last played games, your recent games, like Photoshop, I play Photoshop a lot, that's my most played game. Uh, I love it. I just play it so much. Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077, Valhalla, and so on. If you're recording like I am now, recording the, um, the desktop, uh, the capture controls show what you're recording or not. You have push to talk, you can enable it now or not. You have the microphone and you have the recording currently recording at 1 minute and 59, 2 minutes now, okay? You have the switcher of the scene and S several things that you can actually do right with um, with a main menu, okay? You have the driver software here, the current version, the status, you have the AMD link status, you have tutorials, you have several things, okay? Then you have the other menus, gaming, record and stream, and performance. But let's start with this one, the settings, because it is easier to explain you the settings and then going into the gaming recording and performance because the settings do have some uh, some things that will be presented in these tabs later, okay? So open the settings and the first one you have is the system. So you have the adrenaline version, the 22.3.1 in this case. You have um, your status, which is up to date and you can actually check the updates. You have here the preferred software version, recommended only or recommend, recommended plus optional. So if you want to install the optional drivers, if you want your software to see the optional drivers, you need to go here and select recommended plus optional instead of the recommended only. Then you have the check for updates, manual or automatic. Then we have the snap settings, basically allows you to import or export a snapshot of all your current settings in the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. Okay, so if you want to record your settings when installing new drivers, you can just export them here and then import them and, um, and it will apply all your previous settings. So it's a very nice thing. You have also the factory reset. Basically, performing a factory reset will reset all settings and profiles in AMD software Adrenaline Edition back to default, obviously. You have the reset game stats, so the same thing but only for the games. So imagine if you have some games with Radeon Chill, some others with anti-lag and so on. This will reset the settings for the games, okay? Then we have the issue reporting, which is basically the launch bug report tool. And we have the issue detection. Automatically launch the bug report tool when issues such as BSOD, TDR or device installing errors are detected, okay? That's a good thing. And then you have the hardware and drivers where you can go and see, for example, your hardware details, your vendor, your subsystem ID, everything that you need to do, PCI Express 4, the current bus settings, um, basically everything that you need to do. As you can see, PCI Express 4, eight times. And I'm using eight times because I, I, I'm using several NVMEs. So yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, memory clock, blah, 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 blah. blah. That's it. You have the same for the CPU, processor speed, cores, threads, and RAM. Now we have graphics. We go into the graphics menu and we have several things here. Gaming, eSports, power saving, standard, and custom. So when you actually uh, go for the first time in the software, they ask you if you want to go into the gaming, eSports, power saving, standard, or custom. I advise you to always go to the custom because when activating, for example, the gaming, esports, 
uh, and even the power saving, what will happen is that it will automatically active, activate some settings that you may not want activated, like for example the anti-lag, um, for example the chill and so on. Basically just choose a custom and then activate or deactivate the settings as you wish. Now we have the Radeon RX 6800 and the first thing we actually have is the Radeon Super Resolution that was firstly introduced in this particular driver, the 22.3.1. So Radeon Super Resolution is an in-driver upscaling feature powered by AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, FSR. Users can now take advantage of Radeon Super Resolution to unleash new levels of performance on any game that runs in exclusive full screen modes. The feature will be inactive until the user sets the in-game resolution lower than a monitor's native resolution. Radeon Super Resolution will automatically detect the resolution, cha the resolution change sorry, and upscale to the native monitor resolution, delivering extra performance for gamers to enjoy. Nice. So basically, Radeon Resolutions Radeon. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Radeon Super Resolution is a, um, a variant, a variant, I guess, a variant of the FSR. The algorithm is basically the same using spatial upscaling and so on, okay? And instead of the FSR2 that uses temporal upscaling, which is much better, okay? Basically, what you need to do is just enable it. I won't enable because it will mess with the recording, but all you have to do is enable it and then go to the game and decrease the resolution. For example, if you're using 1440p ultra wide like I'm using, just decrease it to 1080p ultra wide, for example. If you're using 1440p, uh, if you have a 1440p native monitor, just decrease to 1080p and it will upscale already to 1440p. That's how it works, okay? Now we go to Radeon Anti-Lag, okay? Dynamically adjusts frame timing to reduce the lag between the user inputs and visual responses. Basically, to improve the lag in between your mouse and keyboard and your monitor, okay? Still, from my experience, I do know that Radeon Anti-Lag may cause lots of issues. Although you may use, for example, MS Afterburner and you have a flat line in the frame times, meaning that everything is okay, the Radeon Anti-Lag may cause that stuttery feeling on the monitor side instead of the GPU one, okay? Um, and I do not advise it, so just disable it if you want the smoother experience possible, okay? That's my opinion. Now for the Radeon Chill, okay? To conserve power and reduce heat, Radeon Chill reduces the frame rate when the user is idle and instantly ramps it up when the action picks up. Radeon Chill is a kind of an FPS locker that works um, that works uh, by movement, let's call it by movement. So basically when you're playing, it will reduce the, um, the FPS to the ones you want. And when you're kind of stopped, it will reduce the FPS to the lowest number possible to kind of, um, to kind of reduce power, save power and reduce the heat, okay? So when you enable it, you have the minimum FPS and you have the max FPS. If you are using chill just to lock your FPS because you have an, a free sync monitor, for example, I advise you, for example, if you have a 75 Hz monitor, I advise you to go to 72 on the minimum, but also 72 on the max for the maximum smoothness, okay? Also, chill is a bit better than the frame rate target control because it has less input lag, okay? Now we have the Radeon Boost. Dynamically reduces resolution during motion to improve performance with little perceptible impact on image quality. Only works in supported games. For the best results, set games render scale option to 100%. Now, Radeon Boost is something that I, I don't advise you to use. I do not, it's just one of those gimmick settings that when you are standing still, it will render the resolution at 100%. So it will render the resolution at 1080p. But once you start moving, it will render the resolution at 50% or lower. And once you stop once again, it will do the render scale at 100%. Once you start moving, once again, it will decrease the render scale. Basically, it will look like shit because it will look fine when you're stopped, but once you, once you start moving, it will decrease the render resolution and you're basically playing at a lower resolution when moving and it makes no sense. It's just way better to use the Radeon Super Resolution. The Radeon Boost is one of those gimmick settings, in my opinion, okay? So, disabled as well. As for the Radeon Image Sharpening, 
adds clarity to in-game visuals and select productivity and media uh, applications. So this is a new thing because um, it only worked in games, but now since this driver version, the 22.3.1, the it also works with programs, okay? With such programs like, for example, Photoshop and even media playback. That's a new thing, okay? But if you are playing just, for example, if you're playing a game that has really bad TAA, so the anti-aliasing on that game, the TAA is, is bad, so it gets very blurred even at native resolution, you can use the Radeon Image Sharpening to help. I do not advise you to go over 20% of sharpening because when you go over 20% of sharpening, it may look over sharpened in most scenarios, okay? To look better, you need to go from 10 to 20% depending on your resolution and on the TAA implementation. So some games will run perfectly fine without no Radeon image sharpening. Some games will look way better at 10% and some games will look a bit better with, with 20%. Once you start going over 30%, it will look or it may look over sharpened in most scenarios and the image just won't feel right. It will actually feel like it has lower quality than the native, okay? So 10, to 20% is what I advise with Radeon Image Sharpening for games that are really blurred even at native resolution. Or if you are decreasing your resolution because you can't actually, uh, you can't actually play uh, with higher details due to your GPU capabilities, okay? So if you're playing at lower resolutions, you can also use the Radeon Image Sharpening from 10 to 20% to make your experience feel better and look better, okay? Then you have the Radeon Enhanced Sync, an alternative V-Sync mode that minimizes visual tearing, visual tearing and lag, but doesn't limit frame rates. Works with both free sync and fixed refreshed, and fixed refresh displays. So, one thing is for sure: Enhanced Sync has way less input lag than V-Sync. So, if you don't have free sync, you can use enhanced sync. You can use, for example, chill. Let's imagine that you have um, a 60 hertz monitor with no free sync. Just go, select the minimum and maximum frames to 60, and then enable the enhanced sync, okay? It will work way better than your V-Sync. It will have way less input lag, believe me. Basically use enhanced sync as an alternative to V-Sync if you do not have free sync. If you have free sync, just use it, obviously, okay? And basically we have the wait for vertical refresh. Vertical refresh sync or V-Sync synch synchronizes the transition to a new frame or of animation, sorry, with the display update so no seam or tearing is visible between frames. Caps the frames, re uh, cap, <laughs> them. Caps the frame rate at the display's refresh rate. Okay, basically, this is it. It's it's what it does. It just it just basically caps the frames to for you to have no tearing, but the enhanced sync with chill do it better. Okay. Then you also have the advanced options, and the first one is the frame rate target control. Limits your peak frame rate to a given rate, and like Radeon Chill. Frame rate target control doesn't have a lower FPS target that senses motion, and it may provide steadier frame rates overall. Frame rate target control also may add some input lag, and it does. But if you're still having tearing issues with your with your Radeon Chill and your monitor, for example, if you're uh, using Radeon Chill to 72 FPS in your 75 Hz monitor, and if you still have a bit of tearing, mostly in the bottom of the uh, of your monitor, in the bottom of the screen, then just go and use frame rate target control activated. Select the same 72, and believe me, if you're having tearing issues with Radeon Chill, the frame rate target control may and will most likely fix it, okay? So just use the frame rate target control for steadier frames and for steadier and smoother free sync experience, okay? And yes, my cat is here. Okay, foi Tico? Cal. Okay, now we have the anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing smooths object edges to reduce stair-step artifact or jaggies at the cost of some performance. Specifies how the driver interacts with anti-aliasing settings in game. Only affects DirectX 9 applications. So basically the anti-aliasing settings that we have here are just for older applications. But it is good to have, for example, in terms of 
older applications that do not have anti-aliasing for themselves, then you can just go and, for example, enhance application settings or override application settings and select several types of, of anti-aliasing. You have several levels and you have multi-sampling, adapt, adaptive, adaptive multi-sampling, sorry, and sub super sampling. Damn, the Portuguese is taking over. Uh, and yeah, basically we have levels and multi-sampling, anti-aliasing methods and so on. So for older applications, if you, are, if you are, for example, a retro gamer and you can't actually use anti-aliasing inside the game, these settings may help you, okay? Otherwise, they are pretty useless. And if you want to go with DX11, you also have the morphological anti-aliasing, an alternative edge smoothing technique with minimal performance overhead. Does not affect direct, DirectX 12 and Vulkan applications, okay? This is for the X9 and this is for the X11. For Vulkan and the X12, it does not work, okay? Then we also have the anisotropic filtering, Anisotropic filtering improves texture clarity while minimizing visual noise or sparkle. Only affects DirectX 9 applications. So basically another thing that only works for the X9 if you're a retro gamer. Now, more things for the X9. We have the texture filtering quality also. And uh, we have now the surface format optimization. Allows the driver to override the application and choose a more optimal texture format to improve performance. Typically, has a minimal impact on image quality. Okay, basically that's what it is. And we have now the tessellation mode. Specifies how the driver interacts with tessellation settings in the game. Now, this is a very interesting option because this can actually give you a bit more performance, mostly in older GPUs. When, you're ta when we're talking, for example, about Vega, when we're talking about the RX 500 series, like the 570 or 580, or even older than that, the tessellation option may save you in some scenarios. For example, in games that have heavy tessellation, like, for example, the Crisis games, for example, games like Assassin's Creed and so on, they have heavy tessellation and the older cards do not manage tessellation very well very well and will have a decreased performance with tessellation even with slight tessellation the performance decrease will be high because they do not handle tessellation very well okay this for the older cards so if you want you can just go here and use override application settings and then use your tessellation level to around four or eight times I do not advise you to have it on off because it will look way worse, okay? If the game has the tessellation options in-game, you can just disable the tessellation in-game. If the game does not allow you to do that, you just go here to the tessellation mode and you go, for example, for four times or eight times, okay? In older cards, like I told you, RX 500 series or even older than that, this option may help you a lot in terms of performance in some titles okay so it's a very good option to have but for now let's leave it on AMD optimized then we have the OpenGL triple buffering basically an alternative vSync mode exclusively for OpenGL applications but since OpenGL is being is being overtaken by Vulkan gladly uh, because OpenGL is just very old, so Vulcan is way better. Um, we don't actually need it. Then we have the 10 bits pixel format, enables 10 bit pixel format support for compatible displays. If you have um, a 10 bit display, you can activate the 10 bit pixel format, which is better in terms of colors, supposedly. I can't notice, uh, at least in SDR, if you're using HDR, maybe it makes a difference. Um, and it's just it's just overall better, but it may cause problems in terms of, for example, um, in terms of stutters and so on. Because, for example, I when I activate the 10-bit pixel format, I have some kind of stutters in some scenarios and may mess a bit with the colors and so on. So take that in consideration. And then you can reset the shader cache. So basically, if you have a problem with shader cache in some particular game, you can just reset it. Finally, go to let's go to the display. And the first thing that we have is the AMD FreeSync, or it will show, for example, in my case, is the FreeSync Premium, sorry, but it may show, for example, FreeSync, or it may show just the, um, for example, the VRR, the variable refresh rate, okay? 
So yeah, provide smooth responsive gameplay by updating the display as new frames become available. Requires an AMD FreeSync compatible display. If you have indeed the FreeSync, it is a must to have it activated, okay? It is a must, and I repeat, just activate FreeSync, okay? If you have it, do it, because it is a must, you'll have smoother, a very smooth experience inside your range of the FreeSync. You can watch this video passing right now in the screen to understand more, more about it. Um, it is a must to have FreeSync activated, basically smoother experience with less input lag than VSync and HandSync and everything together, okay? It's a must by, by today's standards. Then we have the visual super resolution, the virtual super resolution, sorry, which allows application to render at higher resolutions or at resolutions higher than the display's native pixel grid and then scales image down to fit the display. Produces higher image visuals at the expense of performance. Chosen higher than native resolution in applications to take advantage of VSR. So basically VSR will let you use higher resolutions than your monitor's natives, native one, okay? Overall, the native resolution is always the best looking one. But in scenarios, for example, where your native resolution is quite lower than it should be, for example, um, in a 27 inches monitor, the native resolution should be at least 1440p. For example, if you have a 32 inches monitor at 1080p, you can literally see the pixels at, let's say, one meter distance. The uh, one meter distance, okay? You can see the pixels at that distance because it should be at least 1440p. Then the virtual super resolution may indeed help because it will use more pixels and then scale down to the native resolution. But overall, it will look better to play at v uh, with virtual super resolution VSR with 1440p than 1080p in that particular monitor because, like I said before, the native resolution is just too low for the monitor size, okay? So this is a good thing for those particular scenarios, but in most situations, just use your monitor's native resolution because it is the best. Then we have the GPU scaling. When enabled, the GPU will scale up lower resolutions to fit the display. When not enabled, displays typically handle scaling themselves without the needing of GPU scaling. But if you want to control in your GPU, you can do it, just enable it, and then you can select the scaling mode. Then we have the integer scaling, something new in comparison to the, to the older video on 2021 gives a crisp pixelated look to images scaled up to fit the display. Images that can't be scaled to match the display's exact, si exact size and shape will be centered on the screen. So this was mostly shown the integer scaling for, and I repeat, for older games, for really older games with the X9 and so on, that can't use higher resolutions or something like that. You can just use the integer scaling and it will supposedly look way better. I never tested it because I do not play those older games, but it, at least it should look better, way more crisp uh, and with a better look overall, okay? Then we have the color depth, which basically chooses the color formats to be used with your display. I'm using, I can use 10 bits, which is way better in terms of color depth, but I'm using 8 bits because my monitor is overclocked to 160 hertz and when I do it, I actually need to decrease the, the bits to 8 bits. It does that automatically because it can't do 160 hertz and 10 bits. For 10 bits, I have to decrease to 144. Then we have the pixel format, which chooses the pixel format used to encode images for the display. We have several ones like the full RGB, which is 444. We have 444 with, um, with a YCBCR. We have the 422 and we have the 444 with limited RGB. The most common and the most used is the full RGB and I can't actually tell you the difference in between all of these apart from the, limit, uh, the limited RGB which will be a bit worse in terms of colors but these two I can't actually tell you the difference right now so if you want to know you'll have to Google a bit, okay? But just leave the full RGB, okay? Yes. Then we have the display color enhancement, built-in profiles for your display that improves and enhance game and application color vibrancy. Basically, this is a setting that you can use for, you have disabled and vivid gaming, you can use vivid gaming to have uh, more vivid colors in some scenarios, in all scenarios or just in some games where you actually need 
to um, to have a distinct um, to have a, um, a distinction in between the enemy and the background. Okay, this will help in terms of that. This is just too much saturation for me, okay? <laughs> then you have your custom color. Basically, you can choose your custom colors as well. The temperature, the brightness, the UE, the contrast, and the saturation, okay? And you can even select the color deficiency correction. So if you have a problem, if you have a problem with your uh, with your eyes, you can see all the you can see all the colors. Okay, you can just enable it, and you can select Protonopia, Deutronopia, or Tritonopia. Okay, so that's a very nice thing for people having high some uh, some kind of color deficiency um, in their eyes. Okay, so that's in their vision. So that's a very nice thing that was added. Also, you can select the custom resolutions. You can add custom resolution, can do overrides in terms of display and so on. So there are several things you can do. Now, we have the video options, which has the video profile. Video profiles contain graphic settings that provide different visual experience. Select the profile that best matches your video content or create a custom profile to meet each need. You have the cinema classic, enhanced, home video, outdoor, sports, vivid and custom. Video work as your monitors um, preset modes in terms of of colors they will change the colors the brightness and everything but I do advise you to keep the default just do not use these modes as they are kind of standardized but they aren't very good actually your default and your standard usually is better okay then we have the hotkeys where you can select your hotkeys for basically everything for the instant replay for taking a screenshot for the gif for recording you can select and you can change everything you want easy as it can be then we have the accounts basically where you can connect your accounts your several accounts here in order for example for streaming so if you want to stream you can indeed for example have your facebook account your youtube account for, for you uh, to actually stream easily as possible okay because when you go to the stream you just need to um, you just need to go and start live or start streaming and it will automatically put it on Facebook, YouTube, and so on. So basically, that's how it works. Then you have the AMD link, which basically requires you to download the AMD link application, enable it, so you can kind of do um, an online multiplayer thing in your computer, okay? That's that's also a very nice thing. Then you have the Relief VR, which is also a, a new thing, I think. So you can finally record your VR experiences with Relief. Then we have the record and stream, which basically allows you to, um, to, to change your settings in terms of recording and streaming. Basically, you have the record desktop option, you have the show indicator, you have the borderless region capture, which I disable, and you have then the options for recording. Basically, the options here, what I advise you here in terms of video bitrate is to have it on 40. You can select more or less, but in my opinion, 40 is the mid ground. It's the best in terms of uh, of having a not so big file size with at least the minimum quality. Because what is the bitrate? The bitrate is the amount of information going into your video, okay? So it doesn't matter if you have a super high resolution if you don't have enough information in the video. The bitrate is the information. The higher the bitrate, the higher the overall quality, okay? The higher the overall detail in that video. That's why when you actually increase the resolution, the video size does not increase, but when you increase the, vi the video bitrate, the video size increases a lot. As for the audio bitrate, it is basically the same. Higher bitrate, higher quality in terms of audio, okay? That's what it is. Now we have the video encoding type where we have the AVC and the HEVC. Let's do it straight. The, AV, the HEVC is better. The AVC is basically the H.264, while the HEVC is the H.265. It's a more, um, a mo uh, it's an improved codec, it's a better codec overall, okay? So basically what HEVC does compared to AVC is that HEVC can do better quality with the same video bitrate because it is a better codec, okay? So 40 megabytes per second of bitrate or megabits per second, I think it's megabits, 14, 40 megabits per second of bitrate 
will be will look way better with the AGVC codec than the A the than the AVC. Sorry, select HEVC or the H two six five for better quality. Then the audio channels basically you have automatic or st uh, stereo. Then you have the option to separate the microphone track. You have the option to record or not the microphone with the microphone level and the push to talk options and even the, um, the audio boost of off, low and high, okay? On the other side, you have the live streaming options, which basically lets you select in between several profiles like low, medium, high, ultra, custom and adaptive. As for the resolution, you can also select the resolution you want. I advise you to select the resolution of your monitor. If you have a 1440p monitor, select the 1440p resolution. Then select the FPS to 60, which is better. And the video bitrate works the same. For streaming, you don't usually need that much. You usually select around, for example, 6, 6, 8 or 10, depending on the resolution. For 1440p, I advise you to have at least 10. And for 1080p, I advise you to have at least 6. Okay, but if you can go and if you have a, a good internet, I advise you to go for a bit more like 20, for example, this, if you have a very good internet, otherwise stick with the six or the 10, okay? That's what I advise you. The same goes for the bitrate, for audio, and we also have the, um, the enhanced filtering option, which improves AVC encoding quality under certain scenarios, may have an impact on gaming performance. Yes, because AMD still has the AVC only in terms of streaming, so you have AGVC in terms of recording, but you only have AVC in terms of streaming, which is kind of a bummer, but that's what we have. And then we have the archive stream option or not. So basically, if you want to record your stream as well or not. Um, then we have the media save location. I advise you to have um, your media saved on another hard drive that isn't the gaming one. So basically, if you're gaming um, with your C drive, if you're, if you're gaming with your Windows drive, just put the recording on another drive, okay? That's the best advice I can give you in this situation. You also have the instant replay feature, allows you to instantly save a video or a predefined duration of your last gaming moment, okay? We also have the instant GIF, allows you to instantly save an animated GIF or a predefined duration, of a predefined duration, sorry, of your last gaming moment. Creates a GIF of your highlights, I believe. Then we have the in-game replay, while in-game allows you to instantly play back a video of your last gaming moment. And then you have to select your audio capture device. Basically, default, analog, microphone, and so on. Then let's go to the performance tab when, where you have the metrics with the sample interval and the performance logging location and the option to hide the metrics overlay during logging. I prefer to always hide the metrics because I do not want to see the metrics. I use MS Afterburner. It's just so much better, okay? Not much to see here. Then we go to preferences. Now, in terms of pref in preferences, I always disable most of these settings because they are useless. For SteamVR, if you use SteamVR, obviously, and if you want to actually use Relieve with your SteamVR, you have to you have to enable this, okay? But overall, just have it disabled and not installed at all. The in-game overlay, like I told you, I do not use it because I find it useless most of the times. The web browser, disabled as well. The system tray menu shows the icon here or not. That's what the option does. So I leave it on enabled. The advertisements, AMD so far lets you enable or disable the advertisements. So you just go here and disable. And you now have the toast notifications, which just lets you know what options you have enabled when you go into a game, okay? So I leave it enabled for, for me to actually know if I have, for example, chill, or if I have anti-lag, or if I have Radeon Super Resolution enabled for that particular game. This will appear when launching the game. Then you have the language, you have the always on top option to disabled or enabled, the sidebar position when using the in-game overlay, the animations effect, the animation and effects and so on. Basically, this is what we have here, nothing more to, to show. And that's already a lot. If you want specific settings for just that particular game, you don't need to go 
to the main menu here and activate them for all your settings, okay? For all the games and whatever. You can just go to the gaming tab, okay? and select that particular game where you want to use a particular setting, let's say for example that you want to use uh, Red Dead Redemption is a very heavy game, it's a quite heavy game, so if you want to use Radeon Super Resolution just on Red Dead Redemption, then you go here, open the Red Dead Redemption one and enable the Radeon Super Resolution. Then imagine for example that you have another game where it is more blurred than it should, let's say for example Devil May Cry 5, you just go here and select for example, 20% for the Devil May Cry. This lets you select the sharpening or other options just game by game instead of one generally for all the games and applications, okay? Then on the recording and stream, basically you have your recording and stream options, okay? Mostly this is for streaming options and not recording. You have here the record one with the stop recording, microphone level, basically everything that you've saw before. Then you have the live stream where you can select several settings like for example your microphone, your chat, uh, stop recording or not, the camera, push, push to talk, record desktop or not, all those settings, okay? Then you have the scene editor where you can select your scene if you actually uh, have the indicator uh, shown or not, if the camera is shown or not, if the chat overlay is shown or not. Basically, this is where you kind of um, configure your live stream options or even your recording options. And then you have the media, basically the media that, re that you recorded before. The final tab is the performance tab where you have the metrics. So if you do not use these metrics, if you use, for example, MS Afterburner, I advise you to just unselect everything, okay, to not have anything running in the background. And if you use logging with, for example, this software, I advise you to go with an interval of one second uh, and just then use the logging when you want, okay? Then we have, for example, the tuning settings, which are the overclocking settings. For that, you can see my how to overclock videos. And then we have the advisor, which is basically Horizon Zero Dawn, blah, 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 the last, the last recommendations, uh, the, setting advice, the settings advisor and so on. Nothing really, of really much to see here, basically. So guys, this was a very, very long video. I hope you enjoy it. That's, I, I don't really think that anyone watched the full video because it's fucking, bo it's really fucking boring. I have that notion, but I will have timestamps in the description. But if you watch this video and if it helped you in some way, I am really happy about that, okay? Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscri subscribe and share this video. And if you have any doubts, just leave them in the comment section and I will answer as fast as I can, as always. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.